Don the Art Professor. Today I'm going to show you how to take an old kids book and turn it into something unique and fun that you can enjoy every day of the week sitting on your refrigerator. We're going to show you how to make these refrigerator magnets out of those books, out of something very simple and very easy. Let's hop over there right now and show you how to do this. So you can do this with pretty much anything. I sell vintage collectibles through eBay, Amazon, and a bunch of other sites. So I run into junk books that aren't worth much. This is an adorable 1941 original book, and it has some issues. It's not worth a whole bunch of money. I have 50 cents or a dollar into it, so I'm going to use this book to make some magnets out of. Now, you can use anything, comic books. You can use articles from newspapers or anything like that. At the end, all you have to do is code it as well, and it'll be durable also. As you can see, I'm just going to disassemble the book, pull off the parts I don't want. We're going to cut this down to the segments that I want. I just use an X-Acto blade. You can use a pair of scissors or anything you want. I just happen to have this handy, and I'm pretty easy to uh, cut a straight line for me with an X-Acto. So we're just going to whack this down again. Now, I've got paper cutters as well, so I'm just going to use a paper cutter to get some square edges because the bottom of this and the sides need to be perfectly square so it looks like a professional uh, magnet. You want it to look like the real deal, like you bought it in a store. And that's easy to do if you follow what I'm showing you here. So we'll just whip this down again, keeping it straight on the bottom. You want it to look like the real deal, like you bought this out in a store. And if you follow this, as I said, it will look that way. We just do it again, as I said, to both sides and the bottom. Now, the top we're going to cut differently. We'll glue this onto a magnet. And this is the magnet. These are vent covers. And why I pick vent covers, they're like a fifth of the price of the ones you would get at an art supply store. And these you can paint on. I got these for $3.99 at Menards. And it has three large sheets, so you can do all kinds of magnets with that sheet. Plus tax, of course, but any brand will work that says it's paintable. That's the key on this. And then we're going to glue this down onto the paper here. I sand it all down, too, as well before. I use 150 grit sandpaper on the top of this. You, you don't necessarily have to do this step, but I want to make sure this thing is going to last as long as possible. And uh, with the glue that we use, uh, it actually is flexible as well. So if you sand it right, you put enough glue on here, you carefully press it in, this will stay for a very, very, very long time. And it can get wet at the end because we're going to clear coat the whole magnet on the outside with a matte finish, a matte clear coat as well. So that'll keep it that way. You can make them shiny and glossy just by clear coating them with a gloss finish. Now this is Beacon Fabric Glue. It's basically like Beacon's 3-in-1 glue, which I've used in many videos. But this fabric tack is flexible when dry. And since this is bendable to some extent being a magnet sheet, you want it to be flexible on the top as well so it doesn't rip paper or anything like that. This will hold up for a very long time. I've had some of these magnets for 10 and 15 years without any issue whatsoever. You could coat them as I said before but you can use UV protectant so it won't yellow the paper or anything underneath it as well. So these things are very, very durable. And as I said before, you can use pretty much anything whatsoever to make these. Now, whenever you do the glue on something this large and you're going to put it flexible, I do a checkerboard pattern. I do it left and right, left and right, and then top to bottom, top to bottom, all the way across. And then I carefully line it up and I'm going to press very firmly on this so it will be fully embedded. I'm just trying to line this up right now is all I'm trying to do so that it is straight on the magnet itself. That's another thing that you need to do. That's part of why I straightened out the edges of the paper so I can use those to make sure that it's parallel to the edge of the magnet. And that's another reason why I left a little bit left over. So I can cut this all off at the end of the day. Now I spend a good couple minutes here 
pushing this all down and pressing it in there and making sure the glue is set and the edges of it are more important so it doesn't unravel later on in life or flake off or anything like that. I press it all over as hard as I can for quite some time, every little air bubble you want out because when we go to cut this, it needs to be perfectly smooth so there aren't any issues with it. I just take a regular ruler to straighten this up because now it's thick, we have the magnet. I can't just use a paper cutter. And I'm just carefully uh, running along the edge of the ruler. I have a metal ruler I could have used too, but most people don't carry those, so I didn't worry about showing you it with that. I save these little pieces because sometimes I can do stuff with them too. I just cut off all the extra magnet and we'll also have some extra paper on the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna cut that off as well. Anything extra on the bottom of this. That way it's down to the size I want. You'll have to flip it over to get part of the paper that sticks over the magnet off, but no big deal whatsoever there. And then from here, I'm just gonna whittle away at it with either scissors or an X-Acto blade. I'm using an X-Acto blade on this because there's a lot of areas that I would have to bend this drastically to cut carefully with a pair of scissors, and that could damage the paper. So the more careful you are, the better this will come out. I take my time, I'll whittle around the characters little by little with the X-Acto blade and just flick out the pieces when they're ready to go. You may have uh, some time frames here where the paper slides off the magnet after you've cut it. No big deal, as long as it's not on the part that we want. And if you're careful, that's not going to happen. I take my time uh, on this as well. Now we'll have probably about $2 or so into all these magnets when, when the day is done here. I could sell something like this at a craft show or even online for $24.50 to $34.50 on average for magnets like this. Magnets do sell very well. So again, with price-wise, it just depends on what you're going to do with these. The kids love them. Our kids played with magnets on the fridge. We cut out all kinds of characters. We used to get Nickelodeon magazine, and I made SpongeBob and Squidward and all of that. Um, Cat Dog was another one we had. You could fill your refrigerator with Smurf cutouts and just totally have as many magnets as you want on there. Again, magnets sell extremely well. You can set up and show these. These do extremely well in person because they're cute, adorable, especially in bazaars and places where there's a lot of kids. You could even make these and sell them to local stores, like comic book related ones where you cut up comic books that are in damaged condition, and then you make more magnets out of those and you can sell them to them in bulk. A couple bucks a piece, they can sell them for six, seven bucks, and they can double their money, and you can double or triple your money as well. All you have is time in the magnets themselves. If you do a bunch of standard smaller size magnets, these vent covers will make tons of them, maybe 50, 60, or more even, with the three sheets you get. Again, the time in this is basically cutting these all out. As I said before, you can use scissors in some of these, but you don't want to bend them any more than you have to, because you don't want to wrinkle them at any point. Once they're coated with the clear coat at the end, you won't have much of an issue either with them bending when you pick them up. It'll create a coating on them. The glue also helps too, because the glue, the beacon glue, the fabric glue on this is flexible. So pretty much everything involved in this is flexible. One reason I wouldn't use pretty much any other glue other than the beacon, the uh, fabric cast glue that they have. The better you do at this, the more time you take, the better it's going to look. After you've done a bunch of these, you get pretty quick at whizzing these out. There are X-Acto knives that have swivel edges on them. The last detail after I cut them all out is one of the most important ones as well. What I do is I take a Sharpie chiseled edge and I run a marker, this marker, across all of the very edges of everything. Because what happens is there'll be a little tiny white line from where you cut the paper off or from the top surface of these magnets. So if you come back in with an X-Acto, it'll even everything out. And while you cut some of these out as well, you may mess up and trim a little too much off. So this will just even out all of the borders so they're all pretty much even. It soaks into the paper just a hair and will create a pretty even dark border all the way around it. 
you won't know any difference from anything whether it would be sharpie or not because it blends right in on these vintage papers you will be surprised it looks just like what you would have bought at a store so this works perfect i've had these around for decade probably at this point you can as i said sell them pretty much anywhere etsy is fairly good on these you can sell these even on amazon and as i said the key to this is it's actually a vintage kids book so you can actually say authentic vintage magnet uh, because the paper the design itself is original from 1941 and as you see it's held up extremely well with me gluing it on here cutting it out coloring it in and you see basically the finished item here now all of the edges need to be colored in very carefully when you're doing this every single one and kind of eyeball it so when you're doing one animal or one piece you're matching it to the thickness of all of the other ones that you are doing I take my time I make sure that it fills in all of the edges that's just a big key factor in doing this it'll help even it out if there's any fuzziness from maybe you didn't cut it perfectly that usually mats it down also and as I said we're going to clear coat this at the end with the Krylon matte finish uh, clear coat and you can get it at Walmart I've showed it in other videos as well it works great and you can see in this image right here you can see the white line prior to me coming in and uh, filling it and on this one here you can really see it if you see the white line running right across the edge once I run this marker across it that disappears and it unifies the entire thing and here we have the finished pieces they are adorable they do very well kids love them when they're at the house you can do sci-fi comic books whatever somebody likes you can use magazines and cut out actual people you could just fill in the edges just like I show you here they can make a little place set on the fridge so if you've got your kids there and you're cooking they've got something to do you would be surprised that every child in our house that comes in goes right for these when they're in the kitchen these are any of the many ones that we have done they look great on a fridge as you can see you can combine them make a big scene here they are on a fridge so you can see the size as well that's why they sell well because they're large they're very large compared to any of the modern day magnets you get so and most people think it's expensive but if you buy the vent covers they're pretty cheap to do well there you are hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts again you can make anything into a refrigerator magnet just like I show you here you can do all kinds of fun things including making little play sets for your refrigerator but that's what I have for you hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did please hit that like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live subscribe and tell all your friends